Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and boy have I got something exciting for you today as I'm going to be giving you a full review of the brand new FV4201, the Chieftain prototype. This is a tier 9 premium British heavy tank and I think the community have been very excited for this one. It comes with all of the benefits of being a tier 9 premium tank, aka it makes bonds, it makes great credits, it gets to play at tier 9, which is a lot more fun than playing at tier 8 for a lot of players. But all of that doesn't mean anything if it can't be better than the other two premium tier 9 heavy tanks, such as the Stritzvan K and the WZ-114. Is this vehicle going to be the new king of the battlefield at tier 9? Well, you're just going to have to wait and see. We're going to be diving into some gameplay after we see how it stacks up to compare to its competition. So firstly, let me highlight something important, and that is the Chieftain has received a micro patch which increases its top speed from 35 to 40, its reverse speed from 12 to 13, and its power to weight ratio to give this thing 15.6 instead of 14.4. And so if you think I'm going crazy when I'm discussing the statistics of the mobility of the Chieftain prototype, please take that into account. So the Chieftain prototype, it has a 120mm main armament, or if we're being pedantic, a 119.38. I hope you, un you, you will understand if I say 120 for this video. And immediately we notice that the firepower of the Chieftain is just a little bit better than the Sturitzvang K in pretty much every single area. 2000 DPM instead of 1950, 262 millimeters of penetration instead of 252, 400 alpha instead of 390, this 120 millimeter gun instead of 105, which will allow it to overmatch 35 millimeter plates. It has a little bit better shell velocity and it has more ammunition than it can carry. So it's definitely a step up compared to the other tier nine premium heavy tank of similar regards, the Sturitzvan K with regards to its firepower. When we compare it to the Conqueror and the Concept, however, its gun doesn't seem so outrageous. The Concept has better shell velocity, much better DPM at 2,181, nearly 10% better than the Chieftain. And we also need, need to take into account that the Chieftain has APCR as standard compared to the Conqueror's armor-piercing rounds. And remember, armor-piercing rounds are better if they have decent shell velocity because they get 5 degrees of normalization instead of 3 degrees of normalization, which will mean that the Conqueror has actually significantly more penetration effectively. So, the Chieftain prototype, it's not some new damage-dealing monster, but this gun and this firepower do feel brutal nonetheless. This isn't like the WZ-114, which has terrible damage per minute. This thing will pick you apart, not really, really quickly, but comparably to other tier nine heavy tanks. Now let's move on to the gun handling of this tank. And this is where it's really bad news for the Chieftain prototype. 2.7 seconds aim time, that's poor. 0.8 seconds worse than the Conqueror, for example. 0.37 accuracy is a little bit better than the concept, and so if you've played a concept, you'll know roughly how accurate this tank is going to be, but it's significantly worse than the Stritzvan K and the Conqueror. Now to move on to the gun handling of this tank. It's bad, there's no other way to say it. 0.22 when moving and when turning the tank, and 0.13 when turning the turret makes this massively worse than the concept. The concept, without vertical stabilizers, is kind of like the Chieftain if it was using a Bond Vert stab. And so don't think that you're going to be able to drop vertical stabilizers on this tank to either use a durability device, vents, or maybe even a turbo, whatever you fancy, without really suffering with the, the bloom and also the aim time on this tank. Accordingly, when you're fighting a Chieftain prototype, and inevitably you will be seeing them a lot on the battlefield when this video is released, as people get them from the engineers' starters keys, effectively the loot crates that people are going to be picking up today. Try and keep moving and don't just sit still with your weak points because you can really make it miss probably quite a lot compared to other heavy tanks which would be far better at snap shotting. So the mobility of this vehicle is very comparable to the Stritzvang K. It has a 15.6 power to weight ratio. Again, remember, I'm not going crazy. That's the buffed engine power of this vehicle, which is a little bit worse than the Sturitzvang K, but its top speed is the same forwards, but backwards it goes five kilometers an hour slower as it has a 13 kilometer an hour reverse speed. That's definitely better than a Conqueror. It's not nearly as good as a concept, however, and the concept does feel as if it's whipping around the battlefield far faster than the Chieftain could imagine. Another thing to mention about the Chieftain prototype is the turret traverse is not nearly as good as the other vehicles in this comparison, and its effective traverse speeds also make it feel quite sluggish. But remember that those will be pumped up with the vehicle's extra engine power. And so those effective traverse speeds on Tanks GG 
are likely to get pumped up to probably near the levels of a Stritzvan K, for example. And so if you do have a Stritzvan K already, you should know that that's the kind of mobility you're going to be getting with the Chieftain prototype. Now let's take a look at the armor, and this is where this thing truly does shine. Maybe not so much on the hull. 80 at the front, 60 at the side, 35 at the rear, but look at this turret. 350 millimeters of turret armor on the front and 110 at the side. This means that when the Chieftain is not using any of its gun depression, its turret armor pretty much at the minimum is about 320 effective. And so this means that even 310 millimeters of gold pen stands very little chance of going through the Chieftain. And that is before it's used its gun depression. And when it does, you do have this slight weak point underneath here, which is about 300 millimeters of effective pen. But still, Look, imagine that you've only got 262, only 262 at tier 9. You are not going through this thing at all. Now, the Chieftain does have a bit of a crown that weighs heavy on its head on the top in the form of this weak point. Everything is going to be able to pen that if they can hit it flush. But it's actually quite small on top of this tank. It's not a big crown, more of a, a cap, so to say. And also, as soon as the Chieftain does start to use its gun depression, you've got a very small angle at being able to hit him. This also means that if you're a Chieftain player who really wants to try and min-max this tank, if you turn the turret ever so slightly to the side, i.e. to the right, that means that you can also use the bulge of the mantlet here to cover that weak point. Now do keep in mind that might, might make uh, the side of your turret a little bit worse, but actually when I'm looking at it now, as long as you don't overturn and make this plate a weakness, it's actually probably better to turn your turret slightly to the right and you'll have more effective armor at tanking them. And so while remember you don't have the best gun handling in this vehicle and more often than not you probably want to keep your gun right on your opponents, if you want to min-max this tank, turn that turret to the right, you'll hide your weak point more when you are using your gun depression and you'll even make your turret armor a little bit better against gold rounds. The crazy thing about this turret is you truly can overangle it almost to 45 degrees before your opponents even have a chance of going through the side. And that's what makes this thing just feel so darn powerful on a ridgeline. Unlike a Krenvang, which has to keep its turret directly towards its opponents, it doesn't want to expose the side, the Chieftain kind of can. Not so much when it's facing to the left, however, as this part of the turret armor will become an opportunity for your opponents to hit. So maybe you want to try and position yourself where you're always trying to turn the turret to the right and not so much to the left. Now let's talk about this tank's hull armor. It's really not very good if it's caught out in the open and it's not using any of its gun depression. Everything pretty much is going to be able to go through this. Even tier 7 tanks with standard rounds as this thing has a horrible lower plate that is very flat. Accordingly, the Chieftain wants to try and use just some of its gun depression, even 5 degrees, that will make the upper hull and auto ricochet for armor piercing rounds and only high explosive anti-tank rounds will be able to go through this. Still, this is a very big lower plate to hide and this is not the same as the tier 10 Chieftain where the front comes out more and the lower plate is better angled, which means that you can kind of bait your opponents into shooting your lower plate. This one is so much easier to hit and you really want to try and do everything that you can to hide it. Now let's talk about side scraping in the Chieftain prototype. If you side scrape in this tank, because of the way that the side is slightly bowed, as we can see here, you can kind of overangle this vehicle and bait your opponents into shooting your side armor. It really doesn't look like uh, this should not be penable, but it is because of that angled side armor. So definitely try and make use of that. Overangle your side a little bit to try and bait your opponents to shooting it rather than shooting your lower plate and you might be able to avoid that shell. However, when this tank does side scrape, it also means that this whole area here to the left of the front or conversely to the right of the front with this bizarre shape here will become a weak point. So you can take advantage of that in pretty much every vehicle that meets this apart from tier 7 tanks with standard rounds. So nail it. And also, if the Chieftain kind of tries to bait you with side scraping like this and doesn't angle so much, there's also a weak point on here that becomes prominent as it's quite flat on the side. All in all, though, this thing, it's, it's focused on the turret, let's be honest. But its hull armor isn't absolutely tragic, like on, say, a Stritzvan K, when it is over-angling. And I feel, personally, after playing the Chieftain quite a lot on my, on my press account, my test account, whatever you want to call it, that this thing as long as you can hide that lower plate is incredibly solid and you'll be surprised how many ricochets you pull off. To go with this incredible armor, the vehicle has 1,800 hit points. Not great. It's on par with the Concept 1B and 150 less than the Conqueror. 
And it's also got a disappointing amount of view range, 390, which means that you want to take the correct field mods, recon and situational awareness to not have to use coated optics on this tank. And it's definitely not like the tier 10 chieftain, which has more view range than its contemporaries. Crew wise, if you already have a super conqueror, it's going to be absolutely perfect for this tank. The commander is just the commander. There's also a gunner, a driver, and a loader who is also the radio operator. And so accordingly, considering that there's going to be six cents for free next patch, if you're going to have a premium consumable on this tank, or not a premium consumable, a premium crew member on this tank, then you probably want the loader because they're going to have a lot of pressure. You're going to want to have intuition to make use of those HE shells. You're going to want to have situational awareness to pump up your view range. And your commander won't really be too pressured on a tank like this. So now let's talk field mods on the Chieftain prototype. I would thoroughly recommend you take all-terrain suspension to improve the crossing speed of this tank. Add to that, I recommend that you improve the accuracy of this vehicle as 0.37 base is not very good. Next, you want to take the view range buff to help out that 390 base. And then personally for me, I'd quite like to take the power output tuning, which helps my reverse speed by two kilometers an hour because I don't really feel like the turret reverse is that bad on this tank. However, if you're the kind of player who never wants to go backwards or to pull back from a ridge line, then maybe you'd want to not take the field mod or alternatively even try and boost your turret reverse speed. But I personally wouldn't recommend that. I'll also be taking the firepower slot for this vehicle as I can improve the rate of fire because I'll always be taking a gun rammer on this vehicle. Equipment wise, I personally have two builds for this vehicle. One will be vents with a gun rammer and with a turbo and my second build will be for the smaller maps where I want to drop out the turbo and use vertical stabilizers instead because remember this vehicle has really poor gun handling and a horrible 2.7 seconds aim time. However, if you want to maximize the hit points of this vehicle, maybe you could try and drop one of those for a durability. But I personally think the vents, at least for me, are almost mandatory on this vehicle because of that poor 390 meters base view range. I can get to 466 with regular equipment, albeit with recon situation awareness, brothers in arms and a premium consumable, once you've got the extra 3% view range, from the field modification. Anyway, you know what? I think that's quite enough talking. Let's take a look to see if the Chieftain is really going to be all that on the battlefield. So firstly, we're loading into Westfield with a dream matchup for the Chieftain prototype. And I don't really need a turbo and I'd rather have the better gun handling. So I'm gonna be taking vertical stabilizers for this kind of knife fight, this close quarters ridgeline battle. This is the ideal scenario for this vehicle no artillery to have to deal with only tier 9 tanks none of the tier 10s that could probably out trade me either with regards to their damage per minute and also with regards to the alpha damage that their vehicles have but what i want to show you is just what this vehicle is capable of when it is in these dream situations I have to admit, without the turbo on this tank, it still feels a little bit sluggish. I'm only getting up this slope at the same speed of the AMX M451, but it's by no means slow. Great start to this battle with a shot right up into the top of the AMX 65T. And in this scenario, I almost just feel like it's kind of cheating in a way. You notice how all these shells ricochet even when they kind of hit the, the side of this turret. Most people would think that if you hit a tank, a heavy tank in the side, that's your opportunity to pen it. And if I was playing something like a, a Conqueror, maybe they would have. This vehicle, however, it just seems to be able to sit in these gaps so safe. But not safe from an aggressive flanking play from a TNH VZ. 51. And that was very cheeky of them, so I'm going to have to give up that position and see if I can try and harass the TNH. I'm going to try and fire a shot at their weak point, but it looks like it hit just below the weak point and didn't quite manage to get that clean shell in. So the AMX 65T getting nailed by our tank destroyers at the back, and right now in a situation like this, I feel like it's just about holding. This is one thing that I see a lot. This, this is one of my first times playing a Chieftain-esque kind of tank. Of course, it's not that different to other hold down vehicles. This is one thing that I see a lot of Chieftain players do when they're playing their tier 10 version of this vehicle, which has a very similar playstyle. And so if you do have a tier 10 Chieftain, I'm sure that you are going to be able to do awesome things in this tank. But I think you'll also be a little bit sad when you're playing this tank against tier 10s. And that is that this tank just does so well in holding a position and just saying, yo, come at me, bro. 
is pretty much what it is. It's just one of those kind of ridgeline tanks that is so hard to be able to dig out. We're seeing a lot of those going into the game recently with vehicles like the Minotauro, although Wargaming are making steps in other areas with nerfing the Kranvang. But it doesn't really make sense to me when they kind of nerf a vehicle like a Kranvang and they don't really change it from being the god tier of the ridgeline still, apart from maybe a little bit of accuracy changes or the gun handling changes. But then we get vehicles like the Minotauro going in and now we've got a tier 9 premium tank that seems to be kind of a new standard of tier 9 premium tank. But you've seen the statistics. It's not an all-purpose, crazy good vehicle in every single area. But I have to admit, this is this turret would do well at tier 10. I mean, this this turret, it's not as good as the, the tier 10 chieftain, but we know it does do well at tier 10, right? It's kind of like tier 9.5, this turret. Or should I say it's tier 10 turret, whereas the chieftain's turret is more kind of like tier 11. It, it, the tier 10 chieftain is at tier 11. If this is getting confusing for you, what I'm trying to say is don't expect this thing to be as good as the tier 10 chieftain, but expect it to be pretty much on par with most other tier 10 tanks and also way better than other tier 9s with regards to its its durability on a ridge. I've never felt so safe in a tier 9 tank as I did with my play in a vehicle like this on a ridge. Sure, maybe it's early days, maybe people don't know how to engage this tank. Maybe when more people figure out about the weak points on top, that they'll be able to hit it. But again, when you're using this 10 degrees of gun depression, it's not the easiest thing to hit. And 0.37 accuracy is not great, but it's by no means bad, you know? I do well playing my Soviet tanks when I'm slapping in rounds, when I've got 0.4 accuracy or 0.44 accuracy. And when you've got the field mods on this tank, once you've managed to uh, take yeah, once you've managed to take the field mod on this vehicle and you're even using a premium consumable like that, it just seems to get better and better. Talk about hold down monsters. There is uh, CC1 Mark II. And I managed to lock their tracks down. And I know now that they can't turn the turret to the side. It's only got like a 40 degree angle, I believe. And I think it's only the tier 10 that has a 45 degree angle. They shoot us in the gun. And I'm thinking to myself, maybe if I go forwards right now that I could be able to, but why would I? He's trying to shoot my lower plate. And I'm just gonna stay in this little area. And then I'm gonna proceed to make my way up, repair my gun to have that extra accuracy to finish off the tier nine Italian tank destroyer. Oh, I was feeling pretty chipper about this. Uh, that is a, a large uh, graveyard that we have created in front of us. And the person who brought me down here, which was the TNH, TVZ51 early on in the battle now has to roll away and lick their wounds and that means that I get high ground supremacy now and well, it's the dream really for this tank. It's interesting because when I look at the Conqueror it's it's definitely not bad and I'd say the Conqueror turret it's it is worse than the the, the Chieftain prototypes turret. I do have an opportunity to be able to find a, a shot onto his weak point. Whereas remember, if I turn my gun slightly to the right, which I, you don't see me doing in this replay, but it's early days for this tank. Uh, I'm sure that when I, I practice and I'm really thinking about turning my gun slightly to the right, that's going to make it so that that Conqueror literally has zero chances against me. You'd have to get an incredibly high roll with his premium rounds. I just feel so safe right now, man. It's a safe place tank. Sure, it's it's a fortunate scenario for the vehicle. It's a safe situation. But how these there are loads of positions on maps where this is what you can do with a chief, right? 10 degrees of gun depression. I didn't even mention that when we were discussing the statistics of the vehicle, but to be fair, all of the vehicles in the comparison had 10 degrees of gun depression. Find yourself a ridgeline with that, work it, rock and roll, only expose your turret, out trade, out shoot, out play. It is, it's it's a very satisfying gameplay. Uh, I'm not sure how much of an opportunity it does provide to my opponents to be able to counter it, however. Just missed the CS52 lease there. Now we're going to have to go at the G saw. They fired one shell, so they could have three. They're not going to be able to kill us with uh, that the rest of that magazine but I'm still a little bit concerned. All right, down to two rounds now. Hopefully we can add to this. This has already been a monstrous game. We're up above 8,000 combined. We got six kills and oh no, I was hoping I'd get a, a seventh there to maybe even be able to take a, a Radley Walters mid or at least have a have a go at one. But yeah, it's just my press account, you know? It doesn't really matter to me. The reason why I play this press account 
is for all of you. I have to play it off stream. Oh my god, I have to play World of Tanks off stream? What is this? To be able to uh, try and figure these vehicles out to give you all a better chance of making decisions with your hard-earned cash. Because undoubtedly, you're going to have to gamble to be able to get this vehicle. At least if you want to have it on release. Now, I might as well talk about that now while we're trying to chase down this Gunza Panzer. This vehicle... There's no guaranteed way to be able to get it for now. But, unless you've got loads of money and you're a tank collector, and you must, 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 must have it now, why not just wait? Wait for a little while. I'm sure Wargaming will put it in to some kind of bundle. They've, they've sold the WZ-114. They've sold this Thritz von K. Don't get fleeced. And here, I've already talked about this in my previous YouTube video from last week, but I want to clarify this, that with the way that the loot crates to be able to get this tank works is each one has two and a half percent chance to be able to get at this vehicle. Now, th the problem is, is that while you do have two and a half percent chance to be able to get this vehicle, that's if you already have all of the other vehicles. And so you've got a two and a half percent chance, i.e. you'll have to open like 50 crates to be able to get one tier eight, and it could be any of them. There's no guarantee it's going to be this one. So don't do it. The only people that I would recommend to be able to pick up this vehicle are people who already have all of the other tanks and are willing to open at least 50 crates to have a 50-50 chance of getting this one or a vehicle that I will review in the subsequent days, the KB4 KTTS. All right, so you saw me taking on tier eights and tier nines. Why don't I show you the worst possible scenario? I guess they could be artillery, so maybe not quite the worst possible scenario, but against tier 10s and tier 9s. I'm going to take the turbo for this game, as you saw. And the reason for that is that I feel that being aggressive along the south is the best way to win this map. And I want to show you that a chieftain prototype with a turbo is able to do things that a conqueror simply cannot. And having that extra speed to be able to get into position and to have the, not only from the fact that this vehicle goes faster without the turbo, because it's 40 instead of 35, like on a Conqueror. But also to be able to then have the turbo to pump out that engine power even more, and to have the extra top speed limit on top, really can help you to be able to rush into those early positions of contention. Also, what's up with this? Mr. T1 Tenny 3 says, I think the Chief P really ugly, and I do a sad face with a crying tear. Look, okay world, you know, British people, our looks are already made fun of. Our celebrities look weird, okay, and everybody thinks that we have bad teeth, which is probably quite true. Uh, all right, but look, this is too far, okay? Calling our tanks ugly as well? This is outrageous. Anyway, let me focus back on the gameplay, and that is that I'm going to race into position. I'm going to tell this 277 that I'm going to be able to help them out, and I'm going to try and get into position to be able to nail the enemy 277. In this kind of a scenario, I don't probably want to sit here for very much longer because, yeah, I'm getting dumped on by the 54, but I'm bouncing a heat round. I'm absorbing the Char Future 4's rounds. I'm surviving the push play because of the angling of the armor. We're going to put a round into the side of the 54, turn round to try and help out our 277. While this is happening, an Object 140 is going to shoot me and ram me in the side. I waste a shell there. Now I need to make sure that I don't let this person go hold down on me because I was expecting to die and I wanted to just go, screw you dude, I'll not let you use my wreck to keep you alive. And I'm down to 92 hit points. But I made the push play. We got three tier 10 tanks dealt with and I think that this game is already starting to snowball into our favor because we've got all of the enemy right in front of us in a hold down scenario. We're getting our gun line forward, and this is how you win in World of Tanks. Anytime you can catch three vehicles like that is... That's how you win in World of Tanks, really, especially from a Clan Wars perspective, but it's also how you can win in the random queue as well towards the high tier where people are confident in themselves and they like to play aggressively. See, is that T-54 who slammed a heat round into us? Well, we're going to take a little bit of a, a sneak there, and we wrecked Wreck Bro 1 on the enemy team. Oh vicious name there. And I want you to see just what I'm able to do with 92 hit points once I've actually got the Chieftain into its ideal hold down scenario. The 7772 overexposed themselves. I, I, I don't think they've done the wrong thing by going here, but the problem is, is now that they're here, what are they going to do with the six degrees of gun depression that that tank has? The answer is nothing. I've got 10 and a great turret. They've got five. They, they can't poke. They'll have to 
poke their whole tracks up to be able to get us. Although they did just manage to catch the 60 TP. All right, I catch a full health T95 tracked. Come on, buddy, just track them. Just track them. Oh my goodness gracious, the 277 fired a heat round into the hull. Luckily for me, the T95 misses. And the reason why I waited there, you might be wondering, why did you hold your fire, QB? I held my fire because I wanted him to come slightly further down so that now when I get his side position, I'm safe from the 7772 and I don't have to expose myself to all of the other vehicles. So I have to admit, that was a bit of a five head moment even even for me. I don't have many of those. So I'll claim I'll claim it right now. What's up, Mr. Char Future 4? I bounced a couple of your rounds earlier. I'm gonna use these 92 hit points to finish you off, bud. And again, I just wanna clarify how safe I feel in this tank when I have played it and put it into a forward ridge line position. And sometimes you don't even have to race, as we saw on the uh, the Westfield map to actually get into one of those god tier hold down positions. Four minutes into this battle, we've done 2,700 assistance, 2,000 damage dealt as well. And we're playing a premium tank. This is gonna make credits. So now I'm gonna fire a few gold rounds at the uh, tortoise, but that's what they're for, right? Trying to bludgeon your way through thickly armored hulls or thickly armored turrets at decent distances. And this 310, Luckily, it actually goes underneath and overmatches the belly of the tortoise there, who is now trying to scurry away as quickly as they possibly can, but I'm not having any of that. I'll put yet another round in, and because they're wedging their vehicle slightly upslope when we're firing at them, their armor is not even very good in that scenario. Up to now 6,400 combined in the first five minutes of this battle against tier 10 tanks. And I can tell you, those players that we were playing against, they weren't the worst players in World of Tanks. That is for sure. I'm not saying that they were incredible players, but they weren't bad. And uh, just this vehicle, while I've played it, look, not every game goes how you've seen the battles go here. It, I would be lying if I said that that was the case. Not every battle goes like this, but when it does, boy, you almost feel as if you're like a, a tier 10 tank in a tier 9 frame. And tier 10 tanks don't make credits I guess they do make bonds, but they don't make credits. And considering that we've just had events going in now where we're giving a trialing out this Harvest Festival thing where they pump up the credit multiplier on the server for three hours, vehicles like this could become really fun to play during those events because a lot of players will be playing their tier eight premiums. Whereas, so there'll be a huge amount of tier eight players in the matchmaker and then if you can get in your, your tier 9 premium during when it happens, then, uh, yeah, you can actually be one above everybody else who's trying to farm for credits. And this is nothing new. Um, I talked about this as soon as Wargaming announced tier 9 premiums, and I predicted that tier 9 premiums would go into the game many months before they actually did. And it's just obvious that Wargaming have completely saturated the market at tier 8. And so while they are still going to throw tier 8 premium tanks in, when they want to have these extra special vehicles that go in to try and get you to uh, pony up and throw your, your wallet at the premium store. This is something that I think that we're going to have to get used to. Now, I have some thoughts about that. And that while I think this is a good tank, and I personally do think it is way better than a Stritzfang K, remember, when we looked at this vehicle statistically, it's not as if it was just outrageously good. I'd say the Concept 1B holistically is a better tank. Sure, it's not going to be quite as good when you're in that hold down god tier position on a ridge line, but I would argue with its increased view range, its increased speed, its increased gun handling, and its increased DPM that I would far rather play a concept, and I think you'd be more competitive in one all in all. And I also think the Conqueror, with its increased damage potential, way, 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 way better gun handling, and at least comparable armor and better view range, it's not any worse if if not it's actually better than a chieftain prototype so from that perspective i think that wargaming are still maintaining good practices with their tier 9 premium tanks because as long as they're not actually better than tech tree vehicles then is there really a problem if they have them going into the game if that's the way that they want to monetize their product but also i don't know how all of you feel but i think that they have to be incredibly careful with tier 9 tanks and tier 9 premiums because who's to say that this isn't a slippery slope? 
I already feel personally that the Chieftain prototype is kind of just a better version of the Sturzvang K. I know the Sturzvang K has the um, the better gun handling and that's about it uh, apart from the view range um i i do think that the chieftain prototype is just a better strutz von k now and i think wargaming were incredibly careful to make the strutz von k significantly worse than other tier 9 tanks and i already feel now that we've reached the point where the chieftain prototype is just as good as other tier 9 tech tree tanks and it massively scares me in the future if wargaming buff the chieftain prototype statistics or they release other tier 9 tanks that take it one step further. So our first game on Westfield was an ace tanker and I would say this would be an ace tanker even if this vehicle was released with 1705 base experience for our over 8000 combined and the six kills that we picked up. Then I make 116,000 credits profit playing such a comfortable convenient tier 9 tank albeit it was in a really nice scenario and we did block enough hit points to pretty much destroy our vehicle a couple times over. For the follow-up on Sand River well, let's just say I made those 80 hit points that we had absolutely shine. We get another ace tanker for this time, only one, well, only 1,398, 3,758 damage, 3,000 assistance damage. Didn't fire that many gold rounds, 83,000 credits profit in a simple five minute mop up of the enemy team. This vehicle is as meta as it gets. If you've got a great turret and you know how to use it and you know how to work a ridge line, you are going to do incredibly well with a vehicle like this. I think this tank will be absolutely amazing for very good players who will know how to use the turret, who will know how to deal with the weaknesses that the tank has and will know the different positions that they can go to to dominate the battlefield. I do think, however, that because of this vehicle's relatively lackluster hull armor, that this vehicle won't be very good in the hands of somebody who doesn't really consider how to use it, and then its damage permitted is so poor that they might actually get caught out altogether. So when you see these things on the battlefield, it's going to be another tank that you really just don't want to let sit in front of you on a ridgeline. Don't bother. If you can hit its weak point, sure. If it's got 10 degrees of gun depression on the position it's in, don't mess with it unless you can try and find the hull armor. I genuinely think that you should try and work with your allies to overpower it once it's fired and once it's missed. And because that's really going to be your only opportunity. Hopefully you've got an autoloader, hopefully you've got really big alpha damage and you can try and trade one for one, or hopefully you can try and get your friends together to actually go into its nest of the ridge line and take it for everything it's worth. Because if you can get that Halama, it's a bit of a tragedy. And my final warning to all of you is that ugh, this is going to be a loot box exclusive. You will have a 2.4% chance to be able to get one of the premium tanks that you do not already have in your garage. So unless you have every single one of these vehicles and you're willing to take the risk that you get the KV-4 KTTS instead, you might have to buy 100 loot crates to be able to get this tank guaranteed when this when this vehicle comes out but if you don't have any of these tanks like the Rampanzer, the Alt Proto AMX 30, yada yada yada, the M6Y or the Clan Wars reward tank, the Chieftain T95, you might have to uh, keep putting in 50 boxes and keep putting in 50 boxes and keep putting in 50 boxes to be able to get the Chieftain. And Wargaming, I'd like to call you out for these underhanded garbage tactics. It's disgraceful that you keep introducing new sought after content inside loot boxes. And it's even more disgraceful that you put so much junk that so many people don't want to have inside these loot crates because you know that people will ha will accidentally get them or they'll pay 50 loot crates and then they'll get the one that they don't want because you know they're gonna keep dumping in $50 or $100 into the Wargaming slot machine to be able to get the one that they truly want, which is not the KV4 KTS. It's probably the Chieftain prototype. So shame on you, Wargaming. Shame on you. Why is it too much to ask that when new content goes into the game that you allow us to purchase it without gambling for $40 or $50? That is my caveat to all of you out there. Be careful with this tank and with the system 
in process. Do not expect that you're going to get it. And I would just thoroughly recommend for any of you, unless you're already a tank collector who has all of these tanks, do not buy any of the uh, starters keys. Maybe grind for them in game and see if you get ridiculously lucky. And it's absolute madness that Wargaming realize that they want to turn everybody in a into a tank collector of all of these different premium vehicles which they may have zero interest in purely to get the one that i've featured today in the video anyway ladies and gents boys and girls that was it for today really hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up especially if it was useful if you hated it give it a thumbs down and let me know what you think about the fv4 201 chieftain proto do you think that it looks balanced do you think that it looks overpowered do you think that it looks like it's going to be good for the game are you worried about the state of tier 9 when vehicles like this become more popular and if you're watching this video as it released on monday I'm going to be playing this one as well as the KB4 KTTS and the WT Alf E100 on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. So come along and let's have some fun. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.